Hello you amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. So we're going to start by uh, telling you guys about a contest that's going on. You guys can win one month of Pentest Lab for free. Go to the comment to the description below and I'll link the video there and you guys can enter the contest. So without further ado, let's get into our top 10 favorite burp extensions. I have burp pro and this video is ex of course going to be for burp pro because you cannot use extensions in the free version. Now to install these extensions, you just go to the extender tab and then you have a tab BAP store. So there you can pick your favorite uh, extensions. I'm going to go over my top 10 now. Let's go first into number 10. Uh, for me, that would be the CSRF scanner. So you just add this to your burp configuration like I did. And then whenever you go to your website, you're going to be, uh, you're going to do a live audit from the proxy. And this live audit by default is going to include the CSRF scanner. Now what it's going to do, it's going to look for forums that don't contain a CSRF token. I put this one at number 10 because it often reports false positives. You have to configure it properly and that you can do in the CSRF tab over here. So you have to do a few configurations to get it to work properly, but it's not that easy. The next one I have for you is vulnerals, vulnerals slash uh, retire JS. Now this one doesn't have uh, a tab in here. I'm going to go to my extensions here and show you guys which one I mean. So you have software vulnerability scanner. If we go to the tab uh, B App Store, you can find it in here as well. The software vulnerability scanner and the software version reporter. Now these go uh, look at which versions are running and if there are CVEs for this specific version of the software, they're going to report it. So that's one and you also have retire.js of course and that's for pretty much the same but for JavaScript. So if there's a retire JavaScript uh, running, you guys can see that as well. Let's see, here it is. Exactly the same but for JavaScript. Now the next thing I want to show you is ActiveScan++. This one does have uh, does not have a tab as well, so I'm going to show you guys in the store again. Now, if you guys see, they add a few things to your active scan. If you go to your dashboard here, you have an act a live audit scan, a live audit, and a live passive crawl. You can also start a new live task of a new scan. If you start a new scan, for example, you can crawl an audit, uh, and you can also start an active scan which is going to go and actually uh, uh, execute your request. So you have your static um, scan here, which is just going to look at the re request itself and look at, the do for example, sort of a code review. And you also have your active scans, which are actually going to execute requests and try to hack something. And then when you go and use this extension that we were talking about, so let's go back to the extender tab. If you use the active scan plus plus, it's going to add a few scans, for example, XML input handling, uh, edge site includes suspicious transformations, for example, 777 to 49 or 94, sorry, that would be a, possibly a, a, an SSDI or something else, another vulnerability. So that's what active scan plus plus does. Now for number six, I have CSP auditor. So let's go and find this one again. You can go to the store and install it. What this does, it's going to check your uh, requests for any CSP headers that are missing or misconfigured. So for example, I'm, I have the tab open right here. When you go through your websites, you can uh, populate this list by clicking the refresh button. So if you have nothing in this list, after you go to your target and click around a little bit, you can refresh. And then you can analyze each of the targets. So for example, I can go and analyze the Google clicks and it's going to tell me a little bit about the CSP headers, but it's also going to do a little bit about the passive audit scan. So you, as you can see in here, let's see, we have uh, an error about CSP inline scripts can be inserted. So it's really interesting if you find this kind of stuff. Now I've already checked guys, this is not true. This is a false positive. Otherwise I wouldn't be showing you of course but uh, you can find vulnerabilities this way. It can be a lot easier. Now, one thing I also use is PHP object insertion check, which would be a number five for me. So let's go back to the extender tab. There we go. 
and we're going to look for the PHP object insertion. There we are. So what it's going to do is it in PHP, sometimes you can insert PHP objects into your code. And this is going to insert, uh, try to insert a PHP object into the requests that you make. And it's going to see if that object gets executed by inserting a sleep. And if the page returns slower than normal, this, uh, uh, this extension is going to report it again into your dashboard over here. So that would be for PHP object insert, uh, insertion. Let's go to the reflected parameters at number four. So back to the extender tab again. Let's see here, there we go. And now we're going for the reflected parameters. There we go. Now this, what this uh, extension does is it's going to insert a few random characters and it's going to see if those are reflected in the active scan and in the passive scan it's going to look for anything that you type that's reflected uh, into your page. So for example if you have a search page and you uh, insert a query for example I want to look for flowers and you type in flowers and it gets reflected on a page this uh, scanner is going to tell you. Now of course that's not always a good uh, in that's not always a good indication of a bug but it means that something gets reflected. So you can try to look for stuff like reflected cross-site scripting. That's why I put that on number four. Now on number three, I have SQLI map, which is really interesting and I can show you guys this. So for example, if I have a page with parameters, what I'm going to do now is I'm only going to show my parameterized request. So I can click this uh, square over here that says filter. I can just click it and I can show only my parameters Ah, parameterized requests, sorry for that. <laughs> so when I do that, I can see only requests with parameters. This one, for example, and I can click it and I can send this to the repeater. There we go. And now I can send it to SQL map. So I can do SQL by scan. And when I go there, I can see, of course, that my SQL map is not running. So I just have to go to the API tab and start my SQL API. There we go, just a second before it's starting and then now we started it. And we can start our SQL injection testing. So uh, we can do this again. We can send it back to the repeater or we can just go back to the repeater. Actually, SQLize pen spike and there we go. And we can start our scan. So it's as easy as that. SQLI map, really, uh, really advice to install. Now for number two, we go to the upload scanner. Back to the extender tab, there we go. And we go look at the upload scanner. Now what this does is when you find something, when you find a file upload, the scanner is going to test that file upload for um, dangerous injections. Like for example, it's going to take a small image and going to upload it. It's going to um, try and insert some PHP, some GSP, some ASP, some code try to detect various payloads based on burp uh, burps experience so it's a really good extension if you ask me it's going to try and upload stuff that uh, it shouldn't be uploading so that's why i really like it and at number one of course we have authorize this is one of my favorite extensions i have a full video about that so if you guys enjoyed it I can, i'll leave a link in the uh, description below and i would like to thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I'll leave you guys with uh, one more thing. Um, I really would like to thank uh, Putzek or Sean. I don't know if you guys know him, but he's the one who's providing the free month of Pentester Lab. So thank you very much for that, man. I'll put your Twitter handle in the description as well. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.